Good evening. Thank you so much for being here. I re really appreciate it. Um, my name is Brent Wilson. I'm the Department Chair of Performing Arts, or the Department Chair of Music, I should say, at Ventura College. Um, a couple things before we get started. Please silence all cell phones or no noise-making devices. Um, this weekend is an exciting weekend. Um, on Saturday, the Symphony Orchestra will be playing their concert, their first concert of the semester. Um, so please check that out. As well as on Sunday, there will be a chamber music concert, so please feel free to check that out. The Saturday night concert's at 7.30 p.m., and then the Sunday matinee is at 2.30 p.m. Um, just to talk a little bit about these wonderful artists that we have tonight, we are so fortunate and lucky to have Ani Aznavourian, a wonderful cellist. So she, I mean, if you read her credentials, um, it's, it's outstanding. She's Grammy, Grammy nom nominated. She has played with my favorite symphony. I'm from Chicago, so she's played with Chicago Symphony Orchestra, Tokyo Philharmonic. The list goes on and on. She's principal cellist of Camerata Pacifica, just an amazing cellist. She also, I, I don't want to steal a story from her, but she also, if you look at her bio, she's playing the cello um, built by her father. So that's absolutely an, a wonderful thing. Um, Robert Koenig, we go way back. We are, we are friends from, from probably about a decade now. Uh, I'm going to tell a, a story about Robert. Hopefully he doesn't uh, get mad at me about this. Um, um, he, uh, I follow, or we, we're, we're followers of each other on Facebook, I think that's how you call it, or friends on Facebook, right? And so I saw, I don't know if I might be underselling it too, so I apologize to Robert if I'm underselling this, is that um, recently I think he eclipsed the two million mile um, member of United Flying, so frequent flyer, so I think that he's put in over two million miles as a musician around the world. So if you wanted to do the math on that, I kind of did that as I drove over here, that would be circumnavigating the globe approximately about 80 times. So this is a wonderful artist, has played all over the world. So I just wanted to sort of put it in perspective for you. Um, he's played Carnegie Hall, Lincoln Center, uh, uh, the Washington Kennedy Center, my personal pay, uh, favorite, Boston's Jordan Hall. So um, he also is a professor and head of collaborative piano at UCSB, where I know him from. And um, he also heads up the, he's the artistic director of the Palm Springs International Piano Competition. Um, two wonderful artists. I'm very excited to present this concert. We have one more Laurel Project concert in, um, in April on the Friday, April 12th. Um, and that uh, will be a guitar, solo guitar concert. But without further ado, Anna Aznavourian and Robert Koenig.
Good evening, everyone. Ani and I are so thrilled to be here. I can't believe I've lived in Santa Barbara for 17 years and I've never been to Ventura College. This is an amazing facility. It's just so wonderful for us to be here playing for all of you. And um, Ani and I first met in, we, we were talking about it today, 1995. So we've been dear friends and colleagues for many, many years and have ended up in Santa Barbara. Um, after all these years, we knew each other in New York, and so it's just a, a thrill and a pleasure to play with Ani. Uh, of course, that was the famous Bach adagio from the organ cantata in C major that we opened with. We're gonna take you on a little journey tonight of all sorts of various different styles and eras of music that was written for cello and piano. Uh, the next piece is the uh, Debussy Sonata for cello and piano. Uh, this was written in 1915 and was part of a project uh, where Debussy set out to write six different sonatas for various instruments. He ended up only completing three of them, unfortunately. Uh, we wish there was more, but he, um, he left us with the cello and piano sonata. There's a violin and piano sonata, and there is a, uh, it's called Sonata for Flute, Viola, and Harp. This sonata is uh, three movements. It's only 11 minutes long. Uh, all three movements are sort of tied to each other, but it's 11 minutes of action, action is what I say. It's, um, it's, it's the kind of piece that is very fragmented. You're gonna hear changes, very fast little sudden changes, almost every four bars. We hope you enjoy the WC Sonata.
Thank you. That piece is so full of, of colors and it's so compact. It's almost like if you don't like what you're hearing, just wait a few seconds, it'll change. Um, and in the way that that piece is sort of murky and impressionistic, um, as he was an impressionist composer, uh, the next piece we're about to play is very, very real. Uh, we, we go now to Spain, where the passion of the Spanish composer Manuel de Falla is very, very clear. And all the emotions of each of these six beautiful songs, um, it's, it's just so, so real, so, so clear. Um, it, we, we take a little journey through the range of emotions, everything from joy, tenderness, uh, anger, fire at the end, uh, in the real Spanish fashion. So these, um, these six songs, it was originally seven songs that were composed for voice, um, but they're, they're so lovely that a lot of in different instruments play these songs, um, but I think you'll find that they really should be sung. <laughs>
Thank you.
Thank you. This next piece is a piece that's beloved, but um, for some reason I, I feel like it's kind of fallen out of fashion for some reason. I, I, I'm not quite sure why, but I feel like the Schubert Arpeggioni Sonata is something that I heard a lot when I was a child growing up, but not so much these days. And um, I'm not quite sure why, because it's, um, it's a prime example of, of Schubert being the master of song. It's just so, so, so beautiful. Um, it was originally written for the arpeggione, which is a six-stringed and fretted instrument, bowed like a cello, held like a cello. Um, but this piece, <laughs> maybe this is why it's fallen out of fashion, but this piece would be much easier on, a, on an arpeggione because of the extra strings. Uh, you'll, you'll see the, me uh, sort of leaping around the instrument um, <laughs> and, and hoping for the, the Schubert gods to be with me. And, uh, <laughs> but it, it's, it's really wonderful. I'm, I'm so happy to be playing this with Bob. He just sounds spectacular on this, this wonderful piece. So here's Schubert's lovely arpeggione.
Thank mm-hmm. you.
Before Ani tells you a little bit about the last piece on the program, I just thought I would share when we were putting this program together and trying to decide the order of the program, I suggested that we play the Schubert immediately after the Bach. And Ani said, oh no, I need much more time to warm up than that. <laughs> so that's why we put it here. It's an extremely difficult cello part, as you can see, and she is a star to play. To, to play. It's so sweet, thank you. There were definitely times during that that I was wishing that I had frets. I will put it that way. <laughs> uh, speaking of difficult, now we head to Italy, uh, where the rock star, superstar Niccolo Paganini was thrilling everybody with his violin playing. He was so amazing at the violin that people thought he sold his soul to the devil to be able to play the way he did. Things were so easy for him. Everything that was written was just too easy. He was such a technician, he was just a wizard on the violin. Uh, so he decided to write his own pieces for the violin. And he came up with all sorts of techniques which are still played today. Left hand pizzicato, false harmonics, double stop false harmonics, flying spiccato, you name it, he did it. 
Um, his, 20, his famous 24 violin caprices are still among the hardest things that violinists play today. So uh, we as cellists are sort of more known for our singing soulful qualities of the instrument, um, but we do like to steal some flashy stuff from violinists from time to time. So this is a fun one. This is variations on one string, so everything you hear is going to be on my top string, my A string. And um, oh, one thing I want to a quick little um, trivia fact about Paganini. So uh, he was, as you may have seen pictures of him, very tall and lanky. And uh, I think that his spindly fingers maybe helped in, in the ease of his playing. But the cause of, um, his, of, this, of his stature was, was a, a condition called Marfan syndrome, which is a disease of the connective tissue. Uh, I believe Abraham Lincoln had the same condition, and that's why he was so lanky and had those, those long fingers and enabled him to, to just do amazing things on the violin. So here are uh, his variations on one string based on a theme by Rossini, Rossini's um, opera called Moses.